Hey guys, I wanted to record a message just to reassure you again about the fantastic news of the no's and knots and on online fellowship on Sundays, we've been talking about this and uh, it just came up with a pastor friend, uh, he does prison ministry um, this morning as well, that uh, uh, what if the good news was only good news? And I'll show you that uh, unfortunately the no's and knots, which literally come from ein or ayin, which means you shall see or behold the intimacy of the infinite one. And uh, the consummation of the covenant, the love covenant of intimacy, it was the promise of the intimacy with God was translated as no or not. And uh, I'll show you what the, the Hebrew actually says. And uh, sadly, when it was translated in the fourth century, when they translated the no's and nots, instead of what the, the Hebrew letters actually mean, it gave us a religion, meaning it went from the promise of all humanity that uh, you will experience this love covenant, the completion of intimacy with God to uh, a set of rules that says you better not do this or do not do that and uh uh which is basically religion is god's good you're going to relate to god based on rules he's sitting on a cloud and uh send, handed you a set of rules versus the promise of intimacy with the almighty the infinite one and so i promise you you are uh you are filled with the love of God and the love of creation, and it's all around you, and it loves you passionately. And more important, just like uh, if you understand human relationships, just think about how you and your spouse or how you would treat your kids or grandkids versus how God's portrayed. And uh, the whole thing was imagery. So if you could understand the limited human, human love, how much more does the infinite love, a, a love that has such a higher dimension, understand it? And so uh, I think this will really free a lot of you guys up, even though it might be a little uh, what at first, but you can go over and over and over and over and over and over. And I'll try to do the best I can to show you it absolutely never, ever means no or not. And so uh, we'll talk about Paul's thorn um, because that uh, that a lot of Christians think that um, God is, uh, if you read it in English, it says, so Paul wouldn't get too conceited. He gave him a messenger of Satan to keep him in check. Um, would any of you do that to your kids? And then I'll show you something really shocking, what Hasetan is. And uh, it's actually very good. It's the positive news. It's the glad tidings and the life that comes from the consummation of the covenant with God. Fascinating, huh? And so, uh, uh, and then also, um, uh, this just came up, like I said, with my pastor friend this morning. Um, and uh, he was talking about second Second Thessalonians, <laughs> and I'll just read it. I'll read it first, and then we'll we'll go through all this stuff. That it's only good news, and I just assure you that uh, uh, there's a love in you that loves you so much, and it's passionate about you. The whole book is not about a set of rules of how you can please God, or or if I said, uh, hey, what would you think of me if I said this is how my relationship with my wife and kids are? Hey guys, I love you so much. You better obey me, or else. That's just not right. Human love would never conceive of that. How much more would a higher dimension of love never conceive of that? And I'll show you it's actually good news. But uh, Second Thessalonians, see if this is love. See if this is see if this is what you would ever do um, to even your worst enemies. Uh, this will take place when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, verse 8, in a blazing fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not, not, know God and who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's just silly. That, that's just silly, guys. And the uh, love, it's so far from that. Like I said, it actually means you shall experience the purifying passion that comes from the intimacy between you and God. It's a it's a divine promise of intimacy with God versus a threat uh, when it was translated into um, Latin in the fourth century. So let me just show you this. Let me share my screen with you. And this is obviously under the healing of the book category. Um, uh, you don't need to know this to go experience God at all. It's just there's a lot of people that... Um, uh, read these scriptures and they're so mystified by it. Like, why would love do that? They can't, they can't conceive of that in their own. But somehow God's got this special kind of love that is so good that He will inflict vengeance on anybody who, who, uh, uh, who doesn't like Him. And sadly, you become like the the God you worship, and so people think um, God's in a fight. And uh, nothing could be further truth. You're the highest creation. You're not. Uh, you didn't get reduced to a set of rules to follow to, to uh, have intimacy with God. So, 
anyway, uh, let me show you this. <clears throat> so let me just show you. Um, this is sec, uh, Second Thessalonians 1. I'm just going to go through the no's and nots first and show you what they actually say, guys. So um, then you got the foundation from it, okay? <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Uh, they will suffer the penalty. Um, verse 8. In those who do not know. Okay. So let's go. Let's go look at to interlinear Second Thessalonians 1.8. 1, 8. All right. So I'm going to first deal with these knots, and then we can kind of show you what it, what it actually says, okay? So here's May, Strong's 3361, not less. All right, let's see what it actually says. May negates, uh, rules out, no, not, all in parentheses, on, all uh, in uh, italics, which means added by the translator. But... Here, let's get to this root. So here's this, it's the Septuagint, this word. So the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament of Hebrew. So these were the words, they used may for these words right here in, um, in Hebrew. So L, so this is Aleph Lamed. You shall, you shall experience the strength, the strength of God, of the, the staff of the shepherd, the Lamed, the stick. So it's El, where we obviously get Elohim, which means God, and El Shaddai. So does that even come close to meaning? No. And I'll just show you if you go like to Hebrew. El, Aleph Lamed, means gods. <laughs> it's so far. I was sharing with the pastor friend this morning. I go, it's so far from no, it should make your head spin. That why did they say no here? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then it's, uh, so you see, it's never even close to no, it's L. It means God, exactly what Strong says. All right, so let's go back here again. And then it's Ein, or Ein. So it's a left Yod Nun, and the Yod is always the 10. If you go look it up everywhere in scripture, it says double entendre, the completion of intimacy. And Nun is the swimmer or the life, and the left is the strength of the finished work of God. So it's the seed that's released then the life that comes from the finished work of God. So far from no or not, again, it should make your head spin. So let me just show you this. So if you go here, I just did a quick Google search, Ayn or Ayn, and uh, let me just show you this. And then I can show you what the letters actually mean too. But uh, Ayn, we're in the Kabbalah, you hear Ayn Sof. It's understood as God. See if you see if any of these definitions of ayin or ayin come anywhere close to no. <laughs> Just as L, L and ayin are very similar. They were used like it. It was the completion of intimacy of God. So ayin soft understood as God prior to any manifestation of the production of the spiritual realm. The endless one, the end of days, the unending, the no end, the infinite. You know, ayin soft Wikipedia, the ancient of days emanates from the sephirot, <clears throat> which basically is the... Uh, the idea that you can't see God, you can only experience God. And so this, this God, um, we experience it into the cosmic womb of the I in, in the manner that results in the created universe. Meaning this is the womb of God that creates everything. It doesn't mean no or not. You know, Ein Sof, Jewish library, Ein Sof means the infinite in Hebrew and refers to God, his pure being. <laughs> so where we get no, guys? Um, the the great news is once you get past why did they translate it, you're like, of course it's good news. It had to be good news. There's only good news in the good news. And that's what I'm trying to show you. And so if we actually go look at the letters too, I-N, so you've got Aleph, Yod, Nun. And uh, if you go to the, the Hebrew, and you can, just, uh, you can just Google Hebrew pictograms, I'll show you. But Aleph is uh, the ox, the bull, the gentle one. Um, the strength of Adonai, the strength of the leader, they translate that no everywhere in your, in, uh, your Strong's guys. They translate this alpha, uh, which comes from a left, the Greek. Here, maybe I just show you this real quick. So if you go to, you could go to uh, Wikipedia, you can go to Greece.com and go look at theirs where it'll say it came from uh, the Hebrew left, but let's just look at this one real quick. <clears throat> if you go to alpha, it says, it is a value of one. Alpha is derived from a Phoenician letter left, which is the West Semitic word for ox. Does it look like no or not to you? 
Let me go to Greece.com. So if you go to Alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet it derives from the Egyptian hieroglyphic, which is a picture for a horned ox's way by the Semitic Aleph, which today doesn't look at all like an ox. Well, the problem is when it got translated into Latin, they took it as no versus the strength of God, the strength of the ox, the strength of Ayin, the infinite one. <laughs> None of those are anywhere remotely close to a no or negative or not. So anyway, um, <clears throat> when you look at Ayin, so you've got the strength of God. <clears throat> Yod uh, is the, the strength, the work, the deed done, the finished work. If you go look, like I said in scripture, it'll say the intimate act has been completed the work has been done, and then there's a rest. The maleness rests after after completion of the covenant. The male rests, and the the Bible says there is a glorious first covenant, <clears throat> but there is a, but that one fades as good as it is. That's talking about flesh, guys. This first covenant between you, the the life that was created between um, your father and your mother, and you came out, you became the showbread. You be your mother began to show, and you be you became this life. Uh, there is a manna from heaven in the holiest of holies that you can't see. And it comes from the rod of Aaron, which gives life all by itself, which in the New Testament, it's auto translated capital H, capital him, his, etc. Where if you go look at it, auto, it says emphatically means the life that comes from the inner chamber between God and your self. That's it. So, and then you've got noon, which is the fish to sprout the, the, the seed or the offspring. So that's ayin. The finished work, the deed has been done, and the life that comes from the strength of God, which is L, never means no or not. All right. So, so what does this actually mean? It says, Epsilon, if you go look at Epsilon, it'll say this. Epsilon, in the system of Greek numerals, has the value of five. It was derived from the Phoenician letter, hey. So if you go look at uh, Hebrew, I'm going to just show you the pictograms. <clears throat> so hey will be five to behold to show or reveal or so it means when you have hey it'll say you will behold or what we revealed which comes from the creative ability of god you shall behold and uh if you look at like i said you can just go look at uh, uh google hebrew pictograms and you'll get all kinds of um all these oh, what the letters actually mean so i'm just going to click on uh we'll just click on this one here view image so what's hey? Hey means it's a picture of a man with his hands up like this, like, hey, lo, behold, okay? Um, which I'll show you, they translate it as no or, no or not again. It says, you shall behold the creative ability of the infinite one. It never means no or not. <clears throat> so anyway, um, hopefully that starts to make sense. And then noon, this little V, this little V, if you go look at it, um, it comes from... Uh, it's derived from the Phoenician language noon. It's equivalent of the N. New in, in Greek, it's new, uh, but it clearly says it's from the Hebrew noon. And so again, if you go to the Hebrew pictogram, what is noon? New, even look at it, it looks like a little swimmer, a little uh, a little seed of life. The seed, the fish, the life that comes from. Aha, now you'll start to understand uh, the two fish and five loaves that came from the basket. What's basket? basket is tet the snake the endless life that comes when you shed your skin so two is is uh the house so the endless life five is you shall behold the fish right the fish you shall behold the endless life that comes from the inside out the feeding of the five thousand you should understand that that's that's all picture of the endless life eternity that we we all feed on this this covenant. So just trying to show you all the imagery in scripture as we go. So you shall behold this life that comes from the purifying flogos all through scripture, guys. Uh, the flame blaze pure, pure is always purifying. Remember from high school chemistry, a Bunsen burner, it, it burned out and purified all the infirmities and all that left was, was pureness. And so if you go look at the purifying fire all through scripture, it's always talking about uh, you and God in this, this, this passion of God will purify you and perfect you in every way. It's always talking about how precious you are, how the silver and gold, the value of you. So you shall behold the life that comes from this purifying logos, this blaze of passion. 
and this didantos is this is an offering this is to give vengeance no it's not vengeance guys it's uh it's literally this is the completed it's the completions remember there's a noon on the end of this so this is the life that comes from the completion of the offering of the toys so you've got omicron omicron iota so you've got you shall come to behold the finished work of the consummation of the covenant may no i showed you of the almighty one so it's never talking about no or not or he's going to inflict vengeance on those it, this is actually a promise because of the offering and the passion of God that comes from you, you shall experience the L or the I-N. You shall come to experience the, the consummation and know God. You shall experience this uh, intimacy from the cosmic womb of God, and you shall know God. And Theon, it's pretty interesting. All the Greek words for Theon have this uh, tet. You go look at Greek, and they've got noon. So this literally says, Here's Epsilon, Omicron, Noon. It says, you shall behold, <clears throat> and, and, and Ayin, you shall behold, Ayin, remember I just showed you Ayin, Ayin means the infinite one, means the, the cosmic womb of God himself. It means the, the infinite, it never, it never ending, infinite, ancient of days. So if you go look at this again, it's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> you shall behold and experience the life that comes from the ancient of days, which is Theon. Endless life. If you say the word th, like a snake, th, theon, look at where your teeth goes. Th, it goes right here between the opening. So it was literally a picture of a serpent's tongue. Sometimes they have it as an X, like a, a forked tongue of the endless life. Now, if you don't believe me, let me just go to Greek again. So it was always the endless life. And the reason you will receive the life of the serpent that's within you is because the serpent was more cunning than all the animals. Because when it shed its skin, basically saying, when your spirit eventually leaves your body, you won't die. That's why it was more cunning. We can lay down our skin, but we shall experience the endless life, the noon, that comes like a serpent from intimacy with the infinite one. Endless life, guys. So let me show you this. Greek. Theta. <clears throat> All right. Theta is from the Phoenician letter tet. And here we have the forked tongue. It's an opening with the the serpent's tongue all right comes from the phoenician letter tet or the hebrew letter tet semitic letter tet what is tet it's actually a picture of the the serpent in its tail the endless life it means the basket the snake or the life that comes from within the surrounding like a serpent in a basket where the basket and the endless life comes from the consummation of the love covenant with theon the life that comes from the serpent the endless life so that's uh, that's that's uh, nobody's inflicting vengeance on anybody, <laughs> and and those not obeying, no, 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 no. It literally says, "You shall this uh, this may this completion of the covenant of I N or L, the infinite one, God shall obey. This shall you shall you shall hear hupo aku where we get acoustics. You shall hear the command." of the curios, the master. And the master, when a king speaks, guys, it, it's law, meaning this decree, the decree of the king was the spirit leaving out of your pay, your mouth, and shall not return void. You shall receive the life. Look at this, it ends with an N. From the word of God, this is, this is tau omega. Omega is the last covenant. It's the big O. You shall come to experience the last covenant. And the, the glad tidings, Tau, Omicron, Upsilon, of God, which is the master. And we will receive this life that comes from the inner chamber of Is, Yesu. There's no Sus here. They, they put a, an S on it, but there is not. So this is Iota, the 10. This is the, this is the completed work, the deed done. Always, everywhere in scripture, guys, go look it up in Strong's. Every, anytime you see 10, like 12 disciples, it says Duo Deco. Deca is 10. The finished work of two, the tabernacle, house. <laughs> It'll say double entendre. This is sexually explicit. So when it says 12 disciples, it literally says, every time you see no in scripture, guys, it says you shall come to know. Like if I say I know my wife, it literally means 
I have knowledge of her. I have intimacy with her. It's not how much do I know, right? It doesn't mean that at all. It says, I will come to know my wife. I know her. It's where we get the the, the bad word F-U-C-K, literally, not to be, not to shock you, but uh, for unlawful carnal knowledge. So it says, I have knowledge of, of this person that I shouldn't be. And so that's that's unlawful. And so here you've got the yod, the deed done, eta, which is number eight. Eight is always the, the new beginnings, the new life, or the life that comes from the inner chamber of the consummation, Omicron, Upsilon, of the stiffness of the infinite one. This is the life and the intimacy that comes from God himself. So that there's no vengeance on anybody that doesn't know, doesn't, doesn't know or obey. It's literally all a divine promise. All the maze were translated, no or not, instead of you shall experience the intimacy with the infinite one, the ancient of days. You will you will emanate the sephirot into the cosmic womb of the ein, which they translate as no. <laughs> You shall come to know or experience. Actually, a picture of an eyeball in Hebrew, because uh, if you go look at I, where we get I in, and where we get Iota, where Iesus, you shall come to see or experience. You shall come to experience what come the, the consummation of the covenant that comes from the inner chamber, is literally what Iesus says. So you shall see your experience somewhere, never mean to know or not again. So let's just go through one more. And these are just, uh, I'm giving you these tools so you can see that. Anytime you see something that has an unholy, unrighteous, even sin, they translate it from alpha meros, which you shall, meros is the, the strength that you shall behold from the rosh, the highest point of man. And they have an alep on it that translated no. It never means no. It says you shall, you shall experience the strength mem, the flow that comes from resh, the consummation of the highest point of man, which is the strength of God, not Sin, missing the mark, Ameros. In fact, the only people missing the mark are teaching sin means missing the mark. They're not missing the mark. This this literally says, God will never miss the mark. You shall experience this love covenant. <laughs> it's the 100% opposite. All right, let's get in some really deep water because we'll talk about Hasatan here in a little bit, the messenger of Satan in Paul's thorn. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just start with 2 Corinthians 12, 1. I must go on boasting. So he says, I must go on boasting, although there's nothing to gain. Doesn't that strike you as strange? I need to do this, yet there's nothing to gain from it. Once you understand there's no no's or nots, you'll get this, okay? So the nothing here, there's no, uh, uh, literally, let me just go to interlinear for this verse, and then we'll get down to Paul's thorn. And thorn, you should start to understand all the imagery in Scripture. If there's a pointy thing, if there's a stick, if there's something firm, um, if there's the rod, if there's the lamed, the staff, uh, if there's the the the, the branch, um, the vine, the, the nail that connects together, all those are talking about completion of intimacy, the connection, the, the covenant meal. So let's just go in the in linear for 2 Corinthians 12, 1. So to boast, this is the rising up. It literally says the glory, to be proud, the exaltation, this behooves you. And then you've got day. And so you've got the, fin you shall behold the iota, the deed done that that flows from this, Boasting this, vaunting up, not profitable? No, it's going to say that it's the exact opposite. It'll say, you shall behold the, the life that comes from this strength that is profitable of you collecting together and conduced. This whole thing is not telling Paul not to boast. It says this exaltation, God will exalt you, boost you up, vaunt you. And it is profitable for you because this is the life that comes from God himself. So let's go look at Omicron Upsilon. I've, I've done this a bunch of times. Again, it's in italics, parentheses, which is always means add by the translator. And what does it mean? If you go get down uh, in the manuscripts, a left, what does a left mean? Never means no or not, guys. It means the strength of God or the finished work of the ox. And it also, da -da -dun, da -da -dun, these, this Greek word that the Latins translated as no, u, omicron epsilon, was used for the Hebrew, lo, where we get lo and behold, it's actually for hey, it's the same same concept as hey. We all know this. If I go lo and behold, there's my wife. It means my wife has been revealed to me. Never means no or not. It means hey, you shall, which is exactly what hey means, lo and behold. Let me just show you once more. <clears throat> You'll get the trick of this. Hey means lo and behold. 
It doesn't mean not. This word means low. Lamed Aleph, low. And guess what? Ein. Ein, as I showed you, is the strength of the ox, the finished work that life that comes from the consummation of the infinite one, the ancient of days. This is the life that emanates from the sephirah, from the cosmic womb of the ayin. It doesn't come from the cosmic womb of negation. No. Silly. It doesn't come from the negation of El, God. No. Silly. So, if we go down to the uh, the verse, then, let's go down to... Uh, uh, <clears throat> So to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Guys, come on. Would human love ever do this? If you To keep your kids from getting too, too, uh, uh, too much belief in themselves, we all do this. We go, hey, kids, you can do whatever you set your mind to. We, we actually feel bad when they have a low self-image of themselves. But somehow, God, I don't want you to feel too good about yourself and get conceited. I'm going to give you a message from Satan to keep you in check. That's silly, guys. We should always encourage. Love always encourages. Love always looks for the best in humanity. So let's go look at this. What does it actually mean? And uh, we'll go to the verse 7, the interlinear, okay? All right. Oops, not verse 1. I need verse 7. And they're not going to go all of this. But uh, basically, it says, this life of the last covenant shall be revealed to you. Um, and this may I just saw you, it, I just showed you, it means you shall come to behold or experience the intimacy of the infinite one, the ancient of days and the Hina, the finished, this is the finished work and the swimmer or the life that comes from the strength of God, the ancient of days, the infinite one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so let's go look at this start where it's talking about a thorn, where it's actually, this is positive news. This is the offering or the giving of mui, so the strength that you shall come to, <clears throat> Omicron means I in, ayin, you shall experience and come to behold the the finished work of the infinite one that comes from the scolops, the pointy part at the front of scolops. <clears throat> Remember, this is the, the the sharp point. Think about intimacy. It doesn't mean that needs. It doesn't always have to mean produce pain or discomfort. This is the point or pinnacle, the, the, the highest point of man. All right? Skalosh. So, <clears throat> and this is what comes from the eta, this little kind of like N, which we got a tail here. Uh, maybe I should just show you that so you see it. <clears throat> eta. Let's see. It doesn't show you right up front. I have to click on it. So it'll say um, right here. It was derived from a Phoenician letter, het or het. And literally was uh, a tabernacle was a picture of a box. It meant a house. Now, if they have a line, there's now two boxes. It was the life that comes from the inner chamber. So first life, when mothers give life to uh, themselves, it comes out of her inner chamber. And now there's two lives. There's two boxes. Well, the second covenant is when the spirit separates from the inner chamber you there's a new life that's formed it's the spiritual life it's the infinite life but it comes from the hebrew eta chet all right so if we go to the hebrew what is what is chet here's the picture of the the separation of the two walls now tent wall fence or separation a lot of times uh, if you go look it'll say the inner chamber um i'm just going to show you uh het, a fence the inner room or chamber to separate to be cut off from to protect so it literally says the life that comes from the inner chamber that separates from you all right that starts to make sense so this is the life that comes from the covenant from the inner chamber of the covenant that comes out of your flesh your human nature this is the spirit that comes out of you this is a messenger or the glad tidings so here you've got angelos los you've got you shall come to ein Experience the shin is the covenant of of the the staff of the ancient of days. So here you've got epsilon, which is hey, you shall behold and experience the passion and the covenant of the rod of God, which is the strength of the gamel of gamels. This is gamel. I'll show you the Greek it comes from gamma. The Greek is a gamma. Okay, gamma. Um. Gamma is the same word as camel, gamel, in the Hebrew or Semitic gamel. It let, the letter looks like a camel's head. 
<clears throat> so, all right. So if you go look at the Hebrew pictograms, gamel, a camel, something that lifts up from the earth. So think about this, guys. There's a something, think about the camel that's resting and it lifts itself up, this long neck, all of a sudden it's erect. And after the camel does all the work and completes its completes the work, what does the camel do? Goes back down to his knees and shaloms and rests. So the Hebrews, when they wanted to say this is the 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 lifting up of all liftings up, they would go gamel, gamel. <laughs> if they wanted to say the holy place, which is first intimacy, right? Where they talk about the Gentiles are outside. This is the, the genitals of the flesh, guys. Not Gentiles, where they weren't allowed to come in. It's the external genitals. Gentiles. Gentiles. All right? First covenant. So <clears throat> that's holy, but the holiest of holies happens at the rising up of Calvary, which means the rising up within your cranium, and Golgotha, or the rising up or the consummation of the covenant in your skull. This is the holiest of holies carried on the shoulders of men. This is between the two cherubs, guys. So this is the glad tidings. The glad tidings is, is the seed or the, the shout that's released from the completion of intimacy. So this is the strength of God, of the, of the lifting up of all lifting ups, and you shall behold this completion of the covenant of the ancient of days, which is Hasetan. Uh-oh, I'm really going to rock your world. <laughs> so let's go look at this. The adversary, it's not adversary, just as, as I've shown you all the war wars is, is the other lifting up, the other intimacy, the one close to you. And so just check this out. Hebrew origin, Satan. What is Satan? Shin. Shin is actually a picture of a double U in Greek. Let me just show you this. <clears throat> all right. Oh, where are we? Uh... Semek, wait, hold on. Where, right here, Shin. Shin. <clears throat> it's upper, it, it was turned. If you look at this right here, it looks like a W, but if you go read about it, it says it used to be like a W shaped and then it was, it was turned upright. And it's the double U. Well, U means the Vav, the upright stake or the nail. So think about the first covenant is the uprightness of man, first covenant. And it, when he's completed, it's, he rests. A W would be Vav Vav, which is exactly what Shin is in Hebrew. It's the Vav of all Vavs, the connectedness, the, the, the uprightness of all rightness, because they use it twice. Here it is, W, the, the Vav of all Vav Vavs, and it's a it's a tooth, it's the consummation, it's a it's all covenant terms. This is the this is the consummation and the, the devouring I consumed. I consumed uh, my wife in intimacy. I consumed, I took place of the covenant meal. So this is not something bad, guys. And on the end, you've got noon, noon, this uh, this end that's, this, that goes down, okay? Hebrew pictographs, I showed you what noon looks like. The fish or the sprout or the offspring that comes from. When I showed you, it, uh, it's actually a picture of a seed. Noon, the little swimmer. The seed, the fish, or the life. The life that comes from, let's think about this. So it, this life comes from the vav of all vavs. This has to be about God, and it actually is. So it says, this is the life, tet, what is tet? Tet is the basket, the snake, the serpent. The life that comes from the consummation of the covenant of God is endless life, guys. When you lay down your skin, you shall experience the life, noon, the seed or offspring, that comes from the endless life when you lay down your skin of the passion, the uprightness of all uprightness, the W, the Vav of all Vavs. Quite a shocker, guys, but this was good news. This was the other life, the above life. This is the life that the endless life, eternal life that comes from the W, the uprightness and uprightness of the passion and intimacy between God himself and all humanity. So, whew, that's a mouthful, but I wanted to show you there's only good news in the good news. All the no's and knots are, are actually, in the original Hebrew and Greek, guys, 
a promise, a divine promise that you shall experience the cosmic womb and the birth that comes from the infinite one, the ancient of days. So just know there's a love within you that's all around you. That's passionate about you. Just as, uh, uh, as we've been sharing about how to pray, you can communicate with this love. You can communicate with the ancient of days, with the God himself that loves every person on this planet. And every person on this planet actually will receive the new and or the life that comes, the endless life that comes from ha Satan. You shall behold ha Satan. The shin, the tet, the noon, the life that the endless life tet that comes from <clears throat> the W, the Vav of all Vavs, the passion of all passions, the uprightness, the connectedness, the nail of all nails. You shall behold it. There's nothing negative about that whole verse. So just as a, a, a loving relationship, if my wife or kids, um, as we've been sharing, if they said, hey, show me, show me how much you love me. I would never, if I understand this in human love, I would always show them. Of course, I'm going to show them to, to make them secure, to make them feel loved. If I understand that in human love, guys, how much more does a higher dimension of love? So whether it's, could you allow yourself to have life exactly how you would like it as we've been sharing <laughs> the great example with uh, eric and phil's grandson if you get on the, the online fellowships on sunday you know they sent a, a, a picture of their grandson who's almost two and he says i want chocolate chip pancakes as a loving mother she doesn't go you better just behave and obey me or else what does no love responds and goes of course i'm going to give you chocolate chip pancakes if we understand that again as glorious as the first covenant is, the glory that I showed you, the vaunting up, it's not Paul, it's not God saying there's something bad, so I'm going to uh, humble your glory. It says this vaunting up, this exaltation within you is good for you, and you shall experience that life that comes from you and the completion of intimacy with the Ancient of Days. This love, this higher dimension of love will respond. You can just ask it for confirmation. Go show me how much you love me. Make it so clear and so obvious in the next couple of days that I'm communicating with you and love is responding. If you watch, guys, you'll see love will not wait, make, leave you hanging. It won't say, yeah, you better just have faith. The only way to please me is to have more faith. No, no, no. Just as a, a loving mother didn't go, hey, I want chocolate chip pancakes. Well, just be patient. No, love responds. Just trust me that the lover of creation that's in you, that's all around you, that loves you so much will respond to you. There's only good news and the good news. All the no's and nots were actually a divine promise that you shall experience the intimacy and completion of a love covenant with the infinite one, God himself.